or I was an editor of our paper with um, three other people and we received a tip um, that our director of guidance was undergoing some sort of um, investigation. So we made a public records request and then we got um, documentation from the Agency of Education that um, he was had six charges against him for unprofessional conduct in the workplace. Um, we got like a 14 page affidavit um, and a notice of hearing. We read it and we were really shocked. And so we um, decided to publish a story and it was before anyone, any other like news sites in the area had published it. So we broke the story and um, it started circulating really fast. Um, and then the next morning, we were censored by our principal. He cited that it caused um, like imminent danger to the director of guidance. Um, and we didn't really know what to do. We knew that we were right in um, publishing it. It was all just information from the records request. Um, so we called some legal experts. Uh, we... And yeah, I talked to some local lawyers and people from the Student Press Law Center, and um, we decided to replace the um, title of the story with, um, like, this article has been censored by Burlington High School administration. Through, like, our advocacy and through a lot of other great work by other journalists about what was going on, um, we were able to put our piece back up. We knew that it was it was public information. We had every right to publish that. We made um, a public records request. We were given those materials very lawfully. So we knew that we didn't do anything wrong. Uh, I think it was in part by talking to local or to talking to lawyers and legal experts that we kind of figured that out. Um, also, some members of our paper a few years before had advocated for um, implementing the New Voices Law in Vermont. The most important thing was that we were able to talk with other student journalists from all over the country who maybe were experiencing similar censorship issues. They were afraid of being censored or they just wanted to learn more about the First Amendment and protect their newspaper. So we worked with some other districts, including like one of our neighboring districts, Vermont, um, to come up with their own social media and, um, or sorry, media policy um, to make sure that their newspaper wasn't censored by administration. I hope that the students there now feel like they can be critical of the administration and be critical of um, things going on at the school without worrying about how the administration's going to react. I don't know, just to create a strong sense of like what the BHS register is, what we stand for, how we advocate for ourselves. For example, every time I write a story, I'm using the First Amendment and every time we um, protest or post on social media, like that's all um, using the First Amendment. So I don't think it's, I think a lot of people in our generation tend to think of um, the First Amendment in particular as kind of like, yeah, outdated, I guess, or um, something that they don't really have to think about now. Um, but yeah, just knowing that your voice matters and that um, freedom of speech and the press and um, all of them, they it's the way that our voices can be heard and it's the way that we can hold um, like the government accountable. Um. And so I learned how important it is to hold the people in power accountable and how um, the First Amendment can enable you to do that. I think it just gave me the confidence to sort of go after um, some harder hitting stories and um, kind of like what I said earlier, it was like comforting to know that um, I could be critical without um expecting backlash the other thing I learned I think like it's very rare to have that kind of like experience as a young person especially like as someone who's in journalism wants to continue being in journalism having this like investigative background is really cool and not something I ever expected to experience and we had a very like tangible impact um on our 
community, which was really cool. We got to keep going to like the court or the the hearings through the Agency of Education, report on those. Not many young people get to do court reporting. I mean, it was a really intense experience when it happened, like from the moment I woke up to like when I went to bed at night, literally in like the first few weeks of this, like it was just my entire life. And then like very much devoted six months of my time to like researching our director of guidance very in depth and looking at the history of um, the departures of women who worked under him. Um, and so sort of having that background of like taking a project and doing a lot of like just a ton of research and expansion and um, you just like investigative reporting was a really, really cool experience and definitely something that I take with me and something that is sort of a foundation of like my other work. Yeah, like throughout the process, I learned a lot about like the First Amendment in general and not just the New Voices Law. And I think just having that knowledge um, makes me yeah, a more confident journalist. I think holding people in power accountable is something that is just always going to be true and always an issue that we're dealing with. Um, I feel like learning all this in high school has really affected the way that I consume news and media. Um, so when I'm reading a news piece, I'm looking at it through the lens of like, oh, on a very small scale, I've sort of been on the other side of this, like literally not to the scale of, of as, as like big reporters are reporting on, but you know, just being able to be like, I, I, I have a sense of like how they wrote it, um, objectivity, um, even reading something and like when someone when a journalist has like a legal document in there that they requested through the Freedom of Information Act, sort of recognizing that process and understanding it, I think is really crucial and really important. Um, and I think, yeah, I think also just having this experience made me a lot braver than I might've been otherwise, because I know that like, when I stand up for myself, like, especially as a journalist, other people will have my back. I'll always have other people's backs. It's a really, like, the journalism community is amazing. And so many people than you think, like, so many people than you think really do care about the First Amendment.